We say peace be unto you and with your spirit, everyone. I am blessed and, and so honored to be with you today. Um, yes, this is my first noonday. I'm always doing something at noonday. And I, when I was asked, I was, again, very honored and blessed that I was asked um, because we don't take it lightly. We don't take it like this is what y'all are supposed to do. Amen. But this particular lesson that I'm bringing is for the sisters. And um, so we're going to be reading out of Genesis. We're going to read Genesis, the whole 16th chapter. And then I'm going to read out of the 21st chapter. And then I'm going to talk. If that is okay. Uh, all right. So. Out of Genesis 16, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We did not do the most important thing of all. I did not anoint my head. And I have not prayed. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you. Hallelujah. I ask that you bless all that we say, all that we do. Bless the intent of and this subject. Bless that the sisters and I myself will be blessed. Speak to us and through us. That your name will be glorified. These, your people will be edified. The devil will remain horrified. Because the people of God remain unified in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. Um, Genesis 16. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, bare him no children. And she had a handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. And Sarai said unto Abram, Behold, now the Lord have restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go into my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarai. And Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid the Egyptian, after Abraham had dwelt, Abram, excuse me, had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, and gave her to her husband Abram to be his wife. And he said, and he went into Hagar, and she conceived, and when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. And Sarai said unto Abraham, My wrong be upon thee. I have given my maid unto thy bosom, and when she saw she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. The Lord judge between me and thee. But Abram said unto Sarai, Behold, thy maid is in thy hand. Do to her as it pleaseth thee, and when Sarai dealt harsh, hardly with her, she fled from her face. And the angel of the Lord found her by a fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain in the way to Shur. And he said, Hagar, Sarai's maid, whence cometh thou, and whither wilt thou go? And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress Sarai. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Return to thy mistress and submit thyself under her hands. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, that it should not be numbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shall bear a son, and shall name him Ishmael, because the Lord hath heard thy affliction. And he will be a wild man, his hand will be against every man, and every man's hand against him, and he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. And she called the name of the Lord that spake unto her, Thou God sees me. For she said, I have I also here looked after him that seeth me. Wherefore, the well will be called Bashaloi. Behold, it is between Kadesh and Baron. And Hagar bare Abraham a son. Abraham called his name, which Hagar said Ishmael. And Abraham was fourscore six years old when Hagar bare Ishmael to Abraham. All right. Let's start there and I'll get to this other scripture. I'm going to see if I'm going to do this now. No, we'll, we'll, we'll start here. So, this is for you sisters. Don't fret, Sister Hagar. God sees you. 
<laughs> Don't fret, Sister Hagar. God sees you. In, in Genesis, the 12th chapter, God appears to 75-year-old Abram, or Avrim, as the Israel Bible calls him. It tells him to leave his family and his country and go to a place that he will show him. What's interesting is, Abram never had to ask, are we there yet? Why? Because God said, I'll tell you when we get there. Abram's family lived in the land of Ur, of the Chaldeans, a land of idolatry. And he moved to the land of Canaan. When Abram left the land of Ur, he took with him Sarai, his wife, who was barren, and Lot, his nephew. Because of a famine in the land, Abram decided to go to Egypt and live there. On the way to Egypt, they passed through Canaan, and the Lord God appeared unto Abram and told him he was going to give that land to his seed. And if you read the 12th chapter, he names these, 12, these, these seven nations that he took the, uh, the land from and gave to Israel. And when they got to Egypt, Everybody's got a way they want to help God out. Why do we always want to help God out? When, as we often say, God knows how to be God all by himself. We want to help him out. So, Abram tells Sarai, when we get there, tell everybody you're my sister. He's looking out for his own well-being. So, they won't kill me <laughs> and take you anyway. So, that's what they did. The princess brought Sarai to the Pharaoh because this woman was fine. He said, you're a fair woman. You're a good-looking lady. And the Pharaoh put her in his harem so she could be one of his wives. And there's something about when God is involved. God sent trouble and plagues to Pharaoh and his whole house about this woman, Sarai. Pharaoh's so troubled, he jumps on, on Abram for deceiving him. Why did you tell me that was your wife? And for that, with everything you got, because he'd been there so long that he'd accumulated all of this, the, the cattle and wealth, get out. Have any, has anybody ever told you to get out? <laughs> you don't live here anymore. Just get out. And they left. But when they left, Sarai had a slave woman named Hagar. Some places you read maid, some places you read servant, but she was a slave. So who was this Hagar? The scripture doesn't say much about her except that she was an Egyptian, which gives you a clue. And the fact that she was in Pharaoh's house. Now the rabbis have taught over the years, and you have to you look it up, that Hagar was actually Pharaoh's daughter. And when Sarai was in the harem, he gave Hagar to Sarai as her servant. And he said these words, it is better that my daughter Hagar should be a servant in the house of such a woman than a mistress in another house. In other words, be part of somebody else's harem. So now Sarai decides she's going to help God out. She tells Abram, I'm going to give you Hagar, my maid, my servant, my slave. And I want you to go get a child from her because that child's going to be my child. Because just like in the horrendous American slavery, the child did not belong to the father. It belonged to the mother, and then, and by uh, example, the mistress, the slave owner. She said, so, so I can get a, a family through that way. And so Abram does it. Notice, Sarah's barren. Abram's <laughs> over 75 years old, and he's still able to bear children, or to father children, excuse me. So Hagar gets pregnant, and now she begins to look at Sarah. Like, I got a baby and you don't. 
And what does Sarah do? She gets mad. It was your idea in the first place, all right? Your idea. And then she decided to blame Abraham. It's your fault. Let this wrong be on me. It's your fault. And here's where I don't like Abraham or Abram, excuse me. I, and I'm going to say it. He was a punk <laughs> because he should have just told her this was your idea. And now you want to blame me because she's pregnant and you're not. And so he told her, just, hey, do what you want. She's your servant. So she treats her horribly. So bad that Hagar decides to run away. Wow. So she runs away. But there's something about when God sees you. Have you ever run away? Sometimes we run away in our minds. Sometimes we run away physically. Sometimes we're sitting in our own house where amongst people and we've run away. We've checked out. But this child ran away. Now notice, she was not Sarai. She was not Abram, Abram who God had told to. She is an Egyptian. And when she runs away, who comes but the angel of the Lord? For those that don't know or may have forgotten, when you read in the Old Testament, angel of the Lord, that's God in angelic form. So the angel of the Lord talks to Hagar, who's not even a believer yet, really. And he asked her, what are you, what are you doing here? She said, I'm fleeing from her face. He said, I'll tell you what, go back. Go back and be mistreated. Oh. Mm -mm -mm. Go back and be mistreated, Hagar. Because I see you. I know you're out here. And so much so that, that, that he tells her, that, now you're pregnant and I want you to name him Ishmael. And Hagar calls that place where God spoke to her and calls that God El Roy, the God who sees me. Whew. I'm telling you, Sister Hagar, <laughs> that I'm talking to today, God sees you. He sees you in awesome. all of your awesome. agony, in all of your frustration, in all that you're going through, in all of you trying to, 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 to help God out. Or everything we do, God sees you. When you're mistreated, he sees you. So much so the scripture says in another place, pray for them that despitefully use you. And the problem is many of us don't pray for, we pray on. And uh, but he says, pray for you're supposed to bless them. <laughs> what do you mean, bless them? Doesn't the scripture say, uh, touch not my anointing and do my prophet no harm? Doesn't the scripture say, no weapon formed against me shall prosper? Pray for them and mean it when you do it. God sends Hagar back to be mistreated. Because he sees her. Hallelujah. Some of you are in bad marriages and God got you still sitting there being mistreated. Some of your kids come up against you and God's got you still sitting there being mistreated. Now, now I come from a generation that would tell your child, I, I, I brought you in, I'll take you out. I come from a generation that tell you, you just got to go. But God told her, go back. Take it. Mm, mm, mm. Paul says to endure hardness as a good soldier. Lord, help us today. How dare she? So now, 14 years after Ishmael was born, Sarai sees Ishmael playing with his brother Isaac. It has Abraham kick them out. She's still mad. 
She's still feeling some kind of way. Even though she now has the child of promise, she's still mad. Mad about her own decision and still after Abram. So she has them kick them up, kick them out. Why? Because she did not want Isaac sharing in, excuse me, uh, Ishmael sharing in Isaac's inheritance. Isaac is the son of promise, not this bastard child. How is it a bastard child when you gave your handmaid, your slave, your maid to him? Listen to the words for a wife. It is wife number one in those days who decided who was going to be another wife. Today they call it sister wives and all that other foolishness, but it was that woman who was in charge. Come on here. Who decided. Come on here. He didn't just go out and get her. She said, go get her. But she was still in charge. But now she's still mad. But guess what, Sister Hagar? God sees you. <laughs> so she kicks him out. They kick him out. And here's what's, what's written in, in, in uh, the 21st chapter, verses 10 and 11 reads. Wherefore she said unto Abram, cast out this bondwoman. And her son, for this son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. And the thing was very grievous in Abram's sight because of his son. But guess what? Abram did. He still kicked him out. And God said unto Abram, let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad and because of the bondwoman. And all that Sarah, because now he's she now called Sarah, have said unto thee, hearken unto her voice, for in Isaac shall thy seed be called. And also of the son of the bondwoman will I make a nation because he is thy seed. When you come from Abram, no matter what, you've got to be blessed. Hallelujah. You've got to be blessed. And, 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 and so Ishmael, by right, was the firstborn, but he was not the son of promise. There's a difference. This is not the son I promised you. It's the son you went and got. Because your stuff still worked. Mm. Lord help us. Ah. So here's God talking in verses 12 through 14. And he goes on to say. And Abram rose up early in the morning. Took bread and a bottle of water. Gave it unto Hagar. Putting it on her shoulder. Where is it Lord? The child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered, wandered in the wilderness of Bathsheba. And the water was spent in the bottom. And she cast the child under one of the shrubs. And she went and sat down over against him a good way off, as it were, a bow shot. For she said, Let me not see the death of the child. And she sat over against him. And lifted up her voice and wept. Look at her mother. Look at her mother. Look at her mother. We about to die, but I don't want to see my child die. I'm preparing to die. So I'm going to put you over here. A bow shot, but still within earshot. She was still being a mother. <laughs> she was still loving her child. But she forgot. Just for a moment. She forgot. That El Roy, the God that sees me, has already spoken to her. Mm. I'm telling you, Sister Hagar, God sees you. And now El Roy comes back again. Hallelujah. And El Roy says these words to her. And God heard the voice of the lad. And the angel of the Lord called to Hagar out of the heaven and said unto her, What ail of you? What's bothering you, girl? What's troubling you? Hagar, fear not. Don't be afraid. For God have heard the voice of the lad. Remember, he's Abraham's son. He's over there crying under the bush. And God heard him. And God had already promised Abram or Abraham now that he, he also was going to be a great nation. Too numerous even to number. 
Arise, lift up the lad and hold him in thy hand, for I will make him a great nation. God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. He's a well of water in my soul. God lifted up the, the water. She went filled her bottle with water and gave the lad to drink. God was with the lad and he grew and dwelt in the wilderness and became an archer. Notice, he was a bow shot away, but now he can shoot the bow or the arrow. And he dwelt in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother took him a wife out of the land of Egypt. I'm trying to tell you today, Sister Hagar, God hears you. Sister Janice Hagar, hallelujah, Sister Tamika Hagar, Sister Yvette Hagar, Sister Tasha Hagar, especially you. And it, hey God, God sees you. He sees you in your in your in your troubles. He sees you when you're crying and lamenting over folk that won't listen to you. That just goes for all of you. He sees you when you're struggling with your with your illnesses and everything else that you're going through. He sees you when your money's spent, when you don't have enough to do this and enough to do that. And somehow, some way, the God that sees you, hey God, makes the way out of no way. He is the way. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Folk don't have to like it, Sister Hagar. It's okay. Folk don't have to acknowledge you. It's okay. Folk don't have to want to see you progress in the Lord. It's okay. Folk don't have to want to say, my God, that person prays so much differently than they did a year and a half ago. It's okay. It doesn't matter what we think. It doesn't matter what we feel. What matters is, Sister Hagar, is that God, Elroy, woo, sees you, sees you, sees you. Not only does he see you, Elroy, hallelujah, makes everything all right. Elroy can comfort you when you have no comfort. Sister Hagar, God sees you. God bless you today. You may stop the recording. Amen. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, you still recording. Amen. <laughs>